So, you've heard of this game called Persona 3, either through your friends, your siblings, or from your favorite online forum. You probably already looked at images, guides, videos, and even reviews about the game. And even after all the research you've done, one question remains. What the hell is Persona 3? Well, you can rest easy, my friend, because I will answer that question for you today. In this video, I'll give you a simplified and spoiler-free gist of the overall themes, gameplay, mechanics, and must knows of the game, for those who are still on the fence about playing Persona 3. Before we get started though, a few fair warnings about the game. First, the game takes around 65 hours average to beat. It's a long narrative-driven game that plays over the course of an in-game year. So don't go into it looking for a game to blaze through quickly. There will be various moments of plot and story in between, so be ready for some light reading. Second, the game was released in 2006. A lot of gameplay elements are a bit old and unrefined compared to modern games. Nothing too bad, but do keep it in mind in case you get frustrated. It's a bit rough around the edges, but it's still an enjoyable game overall. All good? Okay, let's begin. <laughs> Persona 3 is the fourth installment of the Persona franchise, a game series which itself is a spin-off of the Megami Tensei franchise. It's a game with a reputation for both its uniquely explored themes and outstandingly memorable original soundtrack. As of 2019, it has an expanded release titled Persona 3 FES and a port release for the PSP called Persona 3 Portable. I will be using FES as the basis of my videos as it's the most complete version of the game released today. Now let's talk about the plot. The game revolves around a group of Japanese high schoolers with special powers that band together and form the Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad, or just C's for short. These teens all possess the power of Persona a name referencing Carl Gustav Jung's theory of the human-minded behavior. A persona is a manifestation of someone's psyche, their mind and spirit given physical form. The names and appearance of these usually come from mythological beings, deities, or concepts. These personas are only brought forth when the user's life is in immediate danger or peril, using its powers to defend the user or attack their assailant, the exception being navigator personas. We'll talk more about those later. Since personas only appear when the user is just about to die, C's have developed gun-like devices called evokers. These devices cause the user's mind to experience the feeling of almost but not quite death, forcing the persona to come out to fight for the user. The gun and the act of persona summoning being a facsimile to suicide ties in with the overall themes of mortality and death that the game is centered around. Unlike in previous games, in Persona 3 your teammates can only summon and wield one persona. But that is when you, our protagonist, come in. The protagonist has the ability to hold multiple personas inside his mind, helping you be better prepared for the enemies you will face. He can also, on rare occasions, summon two personas at the same time. Thanks to these special powers, you, yes, you, are appointed as the field leader of Seas, to lead Seas into battle against the dark and evil shadows, beings of unknown origin that feed on the minds of the general populace, causing them to lose their personalities and turning them into emotionless husks of their former selves in the process. You must use your arsenal of personas to fight these vile monsters while you venture inside their domain, exploring its many halls and dark corners while also uncovering information on how to stop their threat to humanity and eradicate them once and for all. That about covers the plot, now let's look at the gameplay. Persona, Persona 3 is a turn-based JRPG revolving around the use of personas to beat the different shadow encounters you come across. The game uses an elemental affinity system, where different shadows and personas are weak to, resist or are immune to certain types of skills. There are 9 different elemental damage types you can deal to an enemy, and one non-elemental damage type called Almighty, which is not blocked or resisted by anything. You must use these different damage types to destroy each shadow encounter you come across, exploiting enemy weaknesses while trying to protect your own. There are 170 personas in the game in total. They are classified in 21 different categories based on the major terror arcanas. Personas learn new skills as they level up. Some of them are great and useful, but some of them are just complete and utter garbage. You have a chance of gaining personas after battle, but the best method of acquiring them is through fusion, 
Your character has the ability to fuse two, three, four, or five personas together to create an even stronger one that has better skills, better stats, better looks, and even reads you your favorite stories before bedtime. You're supposed to fuse your personas constantly to have the best powers available to you. Since personas stop learning skills after a certain level, keeping a persona for a long time is generally a hindrance to your progress. What's that? You like summoning a cat girl in a smiling blue pendant thing? I'm sorry, but they have to go. Here, have the skinny guy instead. Another quality that makes Persona 3 stand out from other games of its era, it's its life sim aspect. When you're not fighting for your life against shadows, you'll be walking around the school or the city, exploring its many locations and talking to the people you find. These places will help you improve yourself and become stronger by raising your character stats. Your character has personal stats that either impede him or allow him to complete certain tasks. As strong as you may think you are, you're still a small, chronically depressed, sleep deprived emo teenager. You do have your limits. Spending a long time fighting shadows will tire your character out, affecting not only his battle performance, but his personal life too. Similar things happen with other aspects of his personality. If you don't study hard, you will do badly on your exams. If you don't become braver and learn to face your fears, you will shy away from people and miss out on potentially helpful relationships. On the flip side, if you do take care of your health, study hard, and become courageous enough to face your fears, you'll start kicking ass in fights, ace all of your attempts, and get to meet some pretty cool folks. Since personas gain power based on the strength of your heart and mind, taking part in the different activities around the city will prove helpful for you, as you will find many places and locations you can spend time bettering yourself. During your treks, you will also encounter the many inhabitants of the city going about their dull and normal lives. Most of them will simply engage in small talk with you. Others will sell you items that are helpful in battle or relevant to quests. And others will give you something very, very important. Something that will be crucial in your fights against the nastiest and most dangerous of shadows. The magical and incomparable power of friendship. <laughs> but wait. How does making friends help me fight against dark goop that is out for my brains, you ask? Well, Persona 3 does something very unique with its life scene feature. It links it directly with its combat. Whenever you become friends with someone, you form a social link. A social link, or just S-link, is a bond between you and another person. Like Personas, social links are classified by Arcanas. The closer you get to someone and the stronger your bond becomes, the more power is given to your Personas of the matching Arcana whenever created through fusion. This is a very important aspect of the game, as you can save hours of grinding a persona for their skills by simply making friends with random people, helping you make your persona stronger, and by extension making combat easier. Of course, you aren't alone in your battles against darkness. You're part of a team after all. Party members in Persona 3 are a great asset in more than just combat, since they display quite a decent level of autonomy missing in most other JRPGs, which also helps make them feel like actual people with minds of their own rather than simple extensions of the player. Your teammates can do a wide variety of actions, ranging from exploring dungeon floors by themselves, engaging in battles without you, finding items, and even leading you to the next floor of the dungeon if they were to find it before you. Besides party members that fight next to you, you also count with the dungeon navigator, who will help you keep track of your team while also informing you of potential threats nearby. Your navigator has the power to scan an enemy for their attributes and elemental affinities, Ordering your navigator to analyze the enemy will reveal their weaknesses in about 3 turns or so. When engaging a shadow with your team, instead of telling teammates exactly what spells to use, you'll be giving a tactics menu. Through this menu you will give out orders to your party as to what kind of skills or actions they should perform on their turn. You can give a general instruction to all of your party members or give individual instructions to each one. Each party member comes with their own stats, equipment, weapon type and persona with skills that fill a certain role in battle. Consider all of your party members' characteristics and skills when you're fusing a persona to optimize your total elemental coverage and efficiency in fights, so that you're able to exploit as many weaknesses as possible. This covers the fundamental basics of the game. There are still many things to expand upon and explain, like weapon types, status ailments, and the deep complex intricacies of fusion, but that will have to be for another time. Before I go, I do want to give out some advice to help you avoid the most common beginner mistakes most people make when playing for the first time. Here are a few tips to help you out. First, do not fuse your initial persona until the first month of the game has passed. Your starting persona gives you access to a powerful spell that will carry you through a lot of tough fights. Fusing it means losing that skill for a whole month, so hold on to it until the first month's over. 
Second, don't feel pressure to max every single S-Link in the game. A lot of new players make the mistake of thinking they have to become friends with everyone they can, simply because they're afraid they'll miss out on a super awesome persona with awesome skills that break the game completely. Or they're afraid that the game will punish them if they don't do all the S-Links. And while there are a few personas that are great to have, it's not really imperative that you get them. The game does not change narratively or punish you if you do all or no S-Links. Feel free to walk around, talk to people and see if you like them or not. Then spend more time with them if you find them interesting or fun to be with. So don't worry your pretty little head about it. You can go out with your buddy and eat noodles together as many times as you want. Number 3. Always scan enemies. Always. There will be times where you'll face enemies whose weaknesses are ridiculously obvious. When seeing an enemy engulfed in flames, you'll instinctively try to use nice skill and avoid fire ones. Sadly, your teammates don't like to judge a book by its cover. There are only two ways your teammates learn an enemy's affinities, if the enemy is scanned or if you hit an enemy with every single element until you stumble upon the right one. Scanning an enemy is essential to get your teammates to know what they're dealing with. Even when bosses hide their weaknesses from you, scanning them still shows your teammates all of their attributes and makes them act accordingly. Finally, number 4. Save constantly. I can't count how many times I had to redo the same floors in a dungeon or talk to the same people over and over again simply because I forgot to save beforehand, losing up to hours of progress because of my own carelessness. In the entrance of the dungeon, there's a grandfather clock that lets you save as much as you want, and in the dormitory, there's a logbook that works exactly the same. Use these as much as you want so that you don't lose your progress like an idiot. Persona 3 is a unique and innovative game compared to both its own franchise and other games of its era. It's such a well-made game that it's still considered one of the quintessential and must-play titles of the PS2, and has remained a gem worth playing a decade and a half after its initial release. While not flawless, it helped pave the way for other sequels that would try to refine and perfect the formula Persona 3 presented. Up to the most recent release which is Persona 5, a game renowned both in Japan and overseas for its stylish aesthetics, social message and original take and perspective over the JRPG genre. Persona 3 was a grand milestone in the development of the series into the fun and eye-catching games that I've come to know and love. It's one of the few games that I will replay at least once a year because of how much of an impact it's had on me. I hope, dear watcher, that it has the same impact on you. Thank you very much for watching my video, I poured a lot of work into this and I'm glad I was able to see it through. I plan on making more in detail videos about Persona 3 and hopefully 4 and 5 in the future. If you want to know more about Personas, S-Links or simply want some more tips, I'd appreciate if you gave them a watch. Or maybe you have a friend who's just about to start the series but doesn't know where to begin. Either way, I thank you for your time and your attention. Until next time.